So welcome back drifters. Today we're back working on the LS engine and what we're doing right now is we're going to work on doing the piston to valve clearance checks. Now I'm going to be using the clay method but I'm also going to be using the dial indicator method. Now we're going to be using a degree wheel to kind of figure this out but basically it's just a simple way to check to make sure that we're not going to slap any valves like what we did the first time around which was not very fun but luckily these pistons got some cutoffs in them so some little like valve reliefs so we should have plenty of clearance but we need to double check just to make sure so that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing we had to do is get this here uh, degree wheel set up properly. Uh, and I use this nice fancy little gauge measuring tool. Uh, it's just a uh, coat hanger that I kind of bent and held in place, but I, it, it'll do the job. What I did is inside here, I put both of the solid lifters so that way we have them ready to go for checking. All the other ones are empty for now because we're not checking every cylinder. Once we know one is good, the rest should be good. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we're gonna check real quick. And yeah. So now to do this, we're using the clay method at first. We're gonna be using dial indicators too, but clay is super cheap. This is just basic modeling clay. We picked it up at Walmart for about, I think it was about $1.25. And you definitely don't need this much. We just need enough to basically fill those little valve reliefs. And then we're gonna use this as like a way to compress it and measure what the clearance actually is. So let me show you how we get this in there. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking the clay and we're gonna basically form it into a little ball, essentially. So now we have this thing in a little ball shape. All we're gonna do is place it inside the valve in the center point, essentially, because this is gonna spread out once it goes in. We're gonna take the other one for the other side and plop that right there. That should be good. So now we're using one of our old head gaskets just for measuring purposes, because we're not actually torquing it all the way down. We're just using this as a method to actually check so we have the right thickness. You don't need a head gasket on there. You could just go metal to metal, but then you're gonna have to use your measurements, which is basically the difference of this gasket when it's crushed, which I think is like 50 thousandths. You'll have to check depending on what engine you're working on, but the same concept holds true. Okay, so we'll just place this sucker on there. Bada bing, bada boom. So before we do this check, we gotta make sure we lubricate the valves so that way the clay doesn't stick to them. All I'm doing is taking a little bit of oil and rubbing it on there, but you could use like WD-40 or something like that. Really not a big deal. And yeah, and then we could put this thing on. This part's always tricky. Basically, I'm just lining it up like you would any other head and just slowly putting it on there, lining up the dowel pins. Okay. Now for this part, I'm not actually tightening it all the way down and I'm not using all the head bolts. I'm just using a couple just to kind of secure it on there. We're not going crazy here. So I got this thing loosely on here, but you'll notice I also put this plate here, which is just basically a thing that I put from the timing cover, the uh, cam plate, retainer plate. Basically, we just had an extra one. You could use anything. You just need some sort of metal piece to mount the uh, dial indicator to. So that's why we have that there. So no worries, but we're ready. So now what I'm gonna do is put in the rocker arms and the push rods. That way we can go ahead and check and make sure everything's good and solid. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, so now we're just putting in the rockers and we're gonna set the valve latch according to GM. We're not putting the push rods or lifters in these ones because these ones aren't being tested. We're only testing the number one cylinder. But uh, we just want to make sure that the valve lash is set properly. Obviously, this is different on a regular small block. But uh, for this one, they're all like net lash. So should be interesting. Another thing to remember is that you got to put these little check springs in here. Because without these suckers, you're going to have a little bit of trouble with your measurements. Okay, so in here, what we're doing is we're setting the lash. So to set the lash, we got the one dot facing up here. And this dot facing up here for the number one cylinder. We obviously know that because we had the head off. But just to verify, that's how that was. Plus, we need... Video proof in case something goes wrong. Okay, so when you're looking at the crankshaft from the back, that pilot hole up on the left needs to be at the 1030 position and looks like we're pretty close. What we gotta do here is we're tightening the one and the seven exhaust, and then we're doing one, three, five intake. All right, so this is the part we screwed up last time because we couldn't turn the crank. So now we gotta rotate this 360 degrees, so one full revolution to get it all the way around. Once we get this back up to zero, oh, I think you're there. That's a big zero? That's big zero, and then see this is 180. Did I already go? Yeah, you already did a whole revolution. I did 360 already? According to the wheel. Oh, fuck. So we managed to go a full revolution on there to get this thing set up, and now you can see that this cylinder is top dead. So we should be good to torque down the rest of the uh, little rockers on that side. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do now. So we're doing exhaust number three and five, and intake number seven on this side. So now we're pretty sure that this is what screwed up on the Corvette the first time we did it because we weren't able to get that exact 360 degree revolution and we torqued it down anyway. So it's most likely that is probably where our problem began. 
So, because uh, it's very easy to go over 360 if you're not paying attention. We almost did it just doing it here, and we even have a degree wheel on it. So, it, you know, you got to pay attention on that one. So, now that we got these things lashed down, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn it back over so we can get back to top dead center for number one. And then we're going to pull the head off and check the clay and do all that and see what we're working with. It rotates! It's rotating and not wow. hitting anything. Holy shit! I didn't know that was possible on the engine. Wow. I mean, we're only doing the one cylinder right now, but so far so good. Okay, so we got it all rotated around. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the head off and inspect the clay. Okay, so we got the rocker arms off and now we're just working on getting the head off. Basically, we'll just do that and then we'll take a look and see what we got. All right, time to see what we're working with. Hopefully the clay doesn't come out with this. All right, cool, it didn't, beautiful. Now we get a better idea of what's going on. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a cross section of this and cut it with a razor blade and then take our measurement. Here we go. So we're just gonna take this, we're just gonna carefully make a nice little cut, just like so. And we're gonna do the same thing on this one. Boom. And now I should be able to just remove this section here, hopefully without, okay, there's a little bit, but okay, we can see the cross section. So now you can kind of see the thickness that we have there. So what we need to do is measure that to get an idea of just how much clearance we actually have as well as on this side here. Okay, the exhaust side is a little bit thinner, but it still looks like it's gonna be pretty good. So we'll get some quick measurements. Okay, so Chris just pointed something out to me that is kind of confusing now that we think about this. We just noticed something critical here. We, we did everything by the book again. We got these measurements with the clay, but here's something interesting. Do you notice something different about these pistons compared to the ones that we just bought? There's no valve reliefs cut into these. Now, we haven't changed anything other than the pistons, and the new pistons have valve reliefs cut into them, but stock, it's not like that. And these things are going into the valve reliefs. So that's telling me that this cam, mixed with this push rod, pushed way past where the pistons were originally, and that means that it was just a, a part application issue, whether or not that's the push rods, or just that the company themselves sold us a cam that maybe was designed for like a truck 6.2 liter, or something that already had the valve reliefs cut into it, whereas his engine did not have valve reliefs, and so it just got that little bit and tapped it. So <laughs> we may not have screwed it up. It may have been just a part error. Uh, this is pretty interesting, actually. It's even going to go flat, that thing was... Yeah, I mean, you can uh... see that it cuts into it. Because yeah. what hit the exhaust hit? Yeah, it was exhaust, and exhaust is always a tighter uh, yeah. fit, and you could see that it's deep inside there. It's not just on the top. Like, it actually goes inside that valve relief. Like, this one right here, you can see that the exhaust goes deep inside the valve relief. So without that valve relief, it's just going to smack the piston. Yeah. I mean, look, here's the difference right here. There's actual cutouts versus not. So, yeah, and just and barely tapping, that's that would do it right there. So... That, that explains may, why all of them hit. That may be the reason right there. I thought it was crazy, but now I'm like really starting to wonder. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, so <laughs> we had to go to the store and get a micrometer because I can't find mine. Luckily, we managed to get one, and we're going to measure the minimum amount that we have in there for clearances. But uh, we took a feeler gauge and checked with that, and it was at like 106. So we're going to see what it is with a micrometer. But the minimum is 100 thousandths for the exhaust side, which is the tighter side anyway. So if that one's good, then we know for a fact that intake's good, but we're gonna double check it. But it's still crazy because this whole thing just goes to show that like, no matter what, it's all about the part selection. And ultimately, if we would have checked the piston of valve clearance the first time, we could have caught this, but we were not planning on doing that because all these parts were suggested to have fit before. And we were like, okay, well, it must be pretty good. But I mean, still, Texas when we B got some <laughs> to do. Man, I'm telling you, but when we actually got it to rotate and it started getting stuck, we should have thought like, oh, something's wrong here. But we didn't expect it to be where it was this far off. I mean, it was way off. We're talking like, even if you take this measurement, there's probably about 40 to 50 thousandths that go into the valve reliefs. And we don't have valve reliefs on the stock pistons. So yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> It's just, it's, I'm, I feel better because at least now I know that it wasn't 100% our fault. There, it, part selection was ultimately the biggest issue. But yeah, what are you going to do? We're fixing it now, so it's all good. All right, so now we're just pulling out the old solid lifters. We're going to put in the hydraulic ones, and now we're just at the uh, basically rinse and repeat process. We're going to do the whole thing. 
install both the heads, get everything back together, and uh, work on our final assembly. So yeah, let's do it. So we finally got all the pieces together. We've got the valves lashed down and we're about to do our final rotation to make sure nothing's gonna hit and nothing's gonna contact. This is the point where we know for a fact that we built an engine that's gonna work. So we already know it technically, but now we gotta see it physically. So here we go. STP, close to STD. <laughs> <laughs> but not quite. <laughs> no, no STD never hurt anybody. Nope. Except for Al Capone. That syphilis got him. Oh, he did that from syphilis. Yep. Well, you think Al Capone, that would have been in the like 1920s, right? Yeah. I don't think anyone was using condoms back then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think nobody was. Yeah, shit, we don't use one now. <laughs> don't be a dummy, come on her tummy. <laughs> yeah, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> would it be more efficient to just pour the bottle over? Yes. Yeah, but who needs efficiency when you got this? Did I just realize that now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. I'm already here. Don't give up now. <laughs> here we go. Right. Can we get a rotation? Oh. Ooh. Oh. That's, that's 360. That's, that's, 360. 360. that's a full rotation, oh. baby. Last time we got 360, we got metallic pings everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. We're, we fucking did it. We fucking we did fucking it. We fucking did it. <laughs> Hell yeah. We have an engine. Should have done this when the engine was uh, facing uh, yeah. normal, but... It's all good. So we're just putting the timing cover on and uh, getting that thing saddled up so we get the oil pan on. We tightened up the bolts on that side because we hadn't done that yet, but now it's hooked up to the oil pump. So yeah, we're just basically buttoning a few things up, get the oil pan on. Tighten up this rear main cover as well, and uh, should be doing pretty good. So guys, Chris is actually heading out. It's getting pretty late, but uh, we ran into an issue with the oil pan. Some studs got stuck, and we got to cut them out. But uh, yeah, it's just we're we're pretty much gonna call it for here because uh, it's been a long day. And we're exhausted, and uh, we still we got it all ready to go. It's turning over. We had a huge win today. We now know that it wasn't entirely our fault as to why it broke the first time. I mean, sure, we made some mistakes here and there, but ultimately it was a part selection issue. Go figure. But yeah, I mean, we're just, we're excited to have this thing done. So we're looking at hopefully here in the next couple days, we're going to finish getting this thing together and putting it back into the Corvette. So if you're excited to see that, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like it if you haven't already, and I'll be sure to see you in the next one. But just remember, keep it nice and easy. See you later.